Hi, everyone. Before we get into the episode, I wanted to take a moment to address the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. This decision stripped away the right to have a safe and legal abortion. Abortion is a basic health care need for the millions of people who become pregnant. Everyone should have the freedom to decide what's best for themselves and their families, including when it comes to ending a pregnancy. This decision has dire consequences for individual health and safety and could have harsh repercussions for other landmark decisions. Restricting access to comprehensive reproductive care, including abortion, threatens the health and independence of all Americans. Even if you live in a state where abortion rights are upheld, access to safe medical abortions shouldn't be determined by location, and it shouldn't be the privilege of a small few. You can help by donating to local abortion funds. To find out where to donate for each state, visit donationsforabortions.com. That's the number four. If you or someone you know needs help, or if you want to get more involved, here are five resources. One, Shout Your Abortion is a campaign to normalize abortion. Two, Don't Ban Equality is a campaign for companies to stand against abortion restrictions. Three, Abortion.cafe has information about where to find clinics. Four, PlanCPills.org provides early at-home abortion pills that you can keep in your medicine cabinet. And five, Choice.crd.co has a collection of these resources and more. I encourage you to speak up. Take care and spread the word. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. episode of the reality is as always it's newer um how is everyone doing today it is uh it's a saturday morning i've had my coffee um i am under hydrated dehydrated because it's still very hot here and you know what guys i think i might be um inching towards covid i'm not sure honestly i'm still negative i'm staying at home i'm not doing anything i'm doing little projects around my house, but mm, these little kids, man, having kids, having kids is, was really, I remember like in the beginning of COVID, everybody was like, your children might kill you because I feel like that's possible. Like they're just so disgusting. Um, my kids are in camp right now. Hey, fun story about my kids being in camp. The other day, um, I was driving my kids up and I was like, who's this man? He looks very familiar. I was like, that guy looks like a Jonas. And then lo and MFing behold, I'm having the <laughs> dialogue that Rosie from Rehossos of New Jersey had when Kathy was getting her house built and she was looking at Kevin and she was like, aren't you like a singer or something? That was me in my head, except I was like, aren't you Sansa Stark's brother-in-law? Um, and no, I did not say, aren't you Priyanka Chopra's brother-in-law? Because I don't fuck with Priyanka Chopra. Um, she sucks. Uh, if you'd like to know more about that, send me a DM. <laughs> Why do I hate Priyanka Chopra? I have an entire other podcast about it. Um, so anyway, it was, yeah, it was Kevin Jonas doing drop-offs at gymnastics camp in fucking New Jersey. Um, it was just hilarious. Cause I was like, oh my God, what is he doing here? He's a very petite man. Um, pint size even. And he looked like he did not want to talk to anybody, but he was also very, very polite and very nice. I didn't talk to him um, because I was trying to play cool and also because I was texting everybody that this was happening. And um, yeah, it turns out his kids go to camp with my kids. So that was that's interesting. But the, but the point is that my kids are in camp and I feel like they're always just and they're like in gymnastics camp. So they're like rolling around the floor, you know, putting they're touching their their hands on the floor and then I don't know what the hand sanitizer situation is. Like how clean are kids, you know? They're not counting to 20 or if they are, it's very fast. So my kids I feel like are bringing home germs and I'm just achy. Um, I've got a little bit of congestion and um, 
I'm overall exhausted, but it could just be because um, a physical manifestation of depression in my body, <laughs> you know? Um, so if my kids have uh, brought me COVID, then it's possible that Kevin Jonas's kids will also have brought him COVID. Hopefully not. Hopefully nobody has it. Um, but anyway, let's get into what we're talking about today. We're talking about our houses of Beverly Hills. We're talking about our houses of Dubai. Let's talk about our houses of Beverly Hills first, simply because that is the order in which I wrote my notes. So we open back up on Diana's Christmas party where Erica has just finished yelling at Crystal not to eat a chicken tender. Also, right after she told her to just, you know, mix some Miralax into your Coke and snort it, girl. <laughs> just get rid of it. Get rid of it. Like, I know I talked about eating disorders a lot last episode, which by the way, I really appreciate everybody for reaching out about that. That was incredibly kind of everyone to be like, you're not crazy. And thank you for sharing that. And damn, we all struggle with the same shit. Like we are all constantly like, I don't want to care about my body while also feeling like we are on top of the world when somebody's like, Hey, you, you look good. And I'm like, Oh my God, thank you. It's like, Deep down inside, we're all just like 11-year-old kids in middle school wanting the pretty girl to tell us that – the pretty popular girl to tell us that we're cute too. You know? That's all we want. Um, But anyway, the thought of the the statement, just get rid of it, is like (laughs) – is like the bulimic-ist statement to (laughs) make in the world. But Erica is just, you know, she's on a rampage. She's lit, as she keeps saying. Um, the party's going on. Kathy Hilton shows up. She meets Cherie and confuses her with probably another black woman. She says, oh, when's the, how long has it been since I last saw you? And Cherie is like, Ooh, I don't think we've ever met before because I would know if I met Kathy fucking Hilton. And, you know, in a lot of instances, I would say um, – that's racist, which it probably it definitely is. But then, you know, Kathy's told us she doesn't see color because that's what Michael Jackson taught her. And also because she puts her eardrops in her eyes. So we have a vision issue here. Um, she also thought that Garcella was Kyle. So <laughs> who the fuck knows what's going on in Kathy's head? Um, then, of course, the PS de resistance of this episode was Asher. Um, Diana's um, intern slash uh, college intern slash summer job turned into fiance baby daddy is he does a David Foster guys he sits he sits those girlies down and he is saying eh. he is singing he is singing there's a wind machine somewhere I don't know if that's what Erica was looking at when she was looking at the music. I think she was like, ooh, you have you have a portable wind machine here. Um, it's a lot, you know. Um, it's uh, – this one thing that Beverly Hills does. We had David Foster do it, and now we're having this um, little man who used to play Chip in the Broadway version of Beauty and the Beast um, do his thing. Good for him. Um, Rena is swaying and tapping and crying, and as soon as Kyle sees that Rena is crying, she's crying even more. Um, I don't know if Rena's crying because she feels the music or if it's because she has a drunk friend who is embarrassing that she keeps vouching for. Erica is screaming over it like a drunk lady at a karaoke bar. Like, if you've ever been to an open karaoke bar, specifically in I Here's What I'm Thinking, and this is, again, a very New Jersey reference. Those of you who live in New Jersey, if you've ever been to the Tropicana in Atlantic City, there's a karaoke bar there. I've been there several times with my friends. It's not one of those places with like private booths. Like in New York City, they have the private booth ones where like you go in with your friends. No, this one is open. And often there is a one lady who has like set up shop at the karaoke bar. And either she is taken on all of the songs and she is doing one after the other or Even if anybody else is singing, she is singing loudly on top of it. She was like, have you ever seen the SNL skit of like, I think it's, um, God, my brain is completely blanking. It's the SNL skit where uh, Kate McKinnon, uh, is that her name? 
is that her name? Guys, I need to look that up because I don't think my coffee is hit yet. Yeah, it's Kate McKinnon. Kate McKinnon has that sketch on SNL where she's like the drunk lady and she like sloppily makes out with everyone. That's what Erica was reminding me of. Um, I know she didn't try to make out with anyone, but I feel like, I mean, that's what she did to, she tried to do with Garcelle's son at that party. Um, But yeah, she's just screaming over everyone and it's embarrassing. And here's the thing. It was embarrassing, but it was like hilarious. And the issue with Beverly Hills is like everybody sees it as like, oh my God, our friend is so out of control. We need to tame her down, right? And like everybody's like upset and embarrassed for her. Like they're all secondhand embarrassment and cringing and thinking about how bad it looks for them, for her. But they're not laughing about it. And I think that is the big difference between like Beverly Hills and the rest of the franchises of Real Housewives. Like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is, I mean, it's Beverly fucking Hills. It's Hollywood. Like they care so much about their image that all they're thinking about is how detrimental this stuff is to their reputation. Whereas if you're from Potomac or Atlanta, you'd be getting shade, you'd be getting laughter, you'd be getting faces. Instead, you're just getting like side eye and grimace and cringe, right, at Erica. And again, nobody has the guts to say like, honey, just for a second. Like no one tells her to shut up. And it's really strange. Um, Speaking of reputation, Erica drunkenly tells Kathy, and she goes full Southern white woman. She says she didn't want to bring her scarlet letter to the to Paris Hilton's wedding. I don't think that's a Southern accent. I think I just did like a 1920s act, actress. <laughs> but let's go with it. She didn't want to bring, bring her shame and scorn and her reputation to Paris. Paris Hilton's what? Paris Hilton has videos of her saying the N-word multiple times. She, You guys not right? She went to jail for like a second. It's – she – She got famous because she had a a sex tape out. Paris Hilton, her best friend was Kim Kardashian. She's not worried about her her reputation from some small-time housewife, honey. Erica, (laughs) don't worry. (laughs) Paris Hilton's, like, sweet, sweet, pure white reputation will be tainted (laughs) because of her mom's, her aunt's crazy friend, Erica, and her legal troubles. Um, it's Beverly Hills. Everybody is fucked up in Beverly Hills. Like, you're good. Paris is good. She's got plenty of other psychopaths that she probably invited to the wedding. Paris is a psychopath at her wedding. Like, come on. Um, but she goes on and on and on about it, about why she didn't come and all that stuff. And Kathy, (laughs) have you ever seen that gif of, um, it's from 30 Rock and it's of Liz Lemon throwing up into a toilet and then, Uh, Jack is, he's just kind of like holding a broom and tapping her on the head with it. And it says, there, there. (laughs) Kathy basically does that to Erica. And she's like, okay. And she's like, all right, you weirdo fucking lady, I'm out of here. She's like, sure. And she immediately goes over to the rest of the group and it's like, (laughs) your friend is out of control, which I love. I loved it. Um, Kyle is pulling this, I don't want to label anyone shit. And like I said last week, I mean, look, you did this to Kim. You used your own sister's addiction for a storyline for years and years and years. And now suddenly you want to be morality police and sensitivity. And oh my God, I don't want to make anybody look bad. Shut the fuck up. Crystal is absolutely right when she says Kyle wants full loyalty because whatever. Erica is still going on on a drunken rampage. She's talking... (laughs) She says her reason for wanting to take better care of her mental health was Amelia Hamlin and Lisa Rinna's family. Ooh. Really? Really? Like, come on. And you know that she's doing it. And Lisa, I feel like as soon as Erica starts to bring up Lisa, Amelia, who probably this season was like, you better not fucking make this your storyline, mom. Like, you used me last season. You're not doing it again this season. As soon as she started doing that, Lisa was like, all right, time to take you home, crazy. And she, like, stumbles out of there with her crazy drunk friend. Um, Diana and Garcelle have this interaction, and Diana apologizes to Garcelle for her behavior at the party. And it seems genuine, but honestly, I don't care what this racist lady has to say, okay? She says some shit about, like, I can see it in your eyes that you like me. And what's great is Garcelle is like, 
yeah, okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye, lady. <laughs> it's like, I just like, I love Garcelle because she doesn't hit you with the fake shit. Like she's not going to say, oh, honey, it's okay. No, I pre- thank you. I really appreciate it. No, honey. No, yeah, let's. Garcelle's like, okay, cool. Yeah, thanks. All right. Bye-bye now. Like, I love that. That is what we need more of. Um, Kathy, during this party, bullies Kyle because she hides her purse and is making her crawl all over the floor and look for it. And if you watch Succession, you will understand. This reminded me fully of Boar on the Floor. Like, you know Kathy Hilton has Boar on the Floor type games in her house. And Kyle is usually the brunt of that abuse. And as much as I hate Kyle, I know that Kathy is a bigger monster than Kyle, but it's one of those things of like, Kathy's an asshole, but Kyle's also an asshole. And sometimes assholes deserve to be treated like assholes, but then also I feel bad when there's a gang up. But anyway, it gave me bore on the floor. Um, Anyway, we find out that PK pulled a Joe Judice, okay? He drove home after, quote unquote, a glass of wine. And was arrested by suspicion of DUI. Now, apparently, this is a thing I didn't know because I'm a person of color. You see, I don't think that these things happen to us. This only happens to rich white people. But apparently, this man was pulled over, arrested, and it was dealt with. But then it came up on the blogs or the tabloids. And now Dari is annoyed because she's having to talk about it on on camera essentially but apparently this is the thing that happens where you get you get pulled over you blow into whatever the thing alcohol meter what is it called breathalyzer that's what it is you blow into the breathalyzer and then the limit is 0.8 he had 0.81 then he's i think driven to the police station and then given the breathalyzer again an hour later and then he's like Oh, somehow it was lower. Yeah, because you sobered up just a little bit, just a tiny bit. And they're giving us their best of like, this is us style arguing. And I don't really care. But the thing that was astonishing to me is like, they're talking about this as like, you know, like this happens sometimes where you have a glass of wine and like it goes later on into this, like Kyle and Dorit have a scene and I generally don't care about it. But what's crazy and what's extremely problematic is Kyle, Dorit and even PK and Dorit are having this conversation about their interaction with cops and how it's not a big deal and it happened and he got suspicion for DUI. Do you know what happens to black people or brown people when there is suspicion of anything, they die. They get murdered. And Kyle and Dorit are like, oh, we have to be so careful. It's so hard. We have to be so careful. Even a glass of wine, you have to be so careful. I see a cop car. I feel like I have a dead body in my trunk. I get so nervous. Oh, you get nervous, do you? You get nervous because you might get pulled over and the tabloids might find out that you got pulled over. That's your biggest concern is that a tabloid might find out that you got pulled over by cops. Oh my God, your life is so hard. Oh my God, PK, be careful. Shut the fuck up. It was so tone deaf and it was just bizarre. I did not care for it and it rubbed me in all the wrong ways. It, I hope this comes up later because this is fucking weird. Um, Rena visits Erica and Erica and Mikey and Rena hold Erica accountable for her over drinking and mixing, mixing meds. And the conversation goes so well that I was like, is this staged? Like, I don't trust them at all. I don't believe that anything like – like that could go so smoothly. I feel like they had a separate conversation. They talked about like, it's so fake that it feels to me like Erica came in with a storyline. And that's why every single time she's drinking, she always turns to Rena and goes, I'm lit. I'm so lit. She's always telling Rena how lit she is. And I feel like there is something going on here where this was like their storyline And that was it. And it was like, oh, like, I'm going to act really drunk. I'm going to be really drunk. And then what I'm going to do is you're going to sit and you're going to have a talking to with me. 
And then we're going to be like, see, this is how good friendships are. We can talk to each other and deal with it and move on and blah, blah, blah. It just felt so fake to me. I don't trust it, you guys. I do not trust it, okay? I don't. We get like a Christmas roundup and everyone acts like everyone has like a, it's like a, just a montage of family fun and meals. And then (laughs) it's Cat Lady Sutton all by herself. All by herself. I sound like Erica, don't you? Don't I? I did an Erica. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, she's all by herself. She's got COVID. She, she just survived. And now that she survived COVID, she wants to get out there and get it in. So then she has a date at a place and they showed the sign. And I was like, is a restaurant called Rona? <laughs> oh, why are you going to a place called Rona? But turns out it's Ronan. But still too close. She's going to on a date, and honestly, Sutton is an SNL character. She's fully an SNL character. She is on a date with that man named Sanjit. I think it's Sanjit. Some people might say Sanjit, but the way he spells it, I'm pretty sure it's Sanjit. Some people, like, some people whose name is Sanjit would spell it, I think, with a double E, but the fact that it's J-I-T, it's Sanjit. Um, But she calls it Sanjit. I was like, okay, do it for the culture, Sanjit. Let's talk about Now, I've spoken before about what I will do in a situation where I ever find myself single as an adult, like as a grown person with children and stuff, right? Like if for some reason I find myself single, I want to get wined and dined. But Sutton on this date, I was like, oh, maybe I don't want to get wined and dined because this seems miserable. Like she's so awkward. She's just such an awkward person. And I don't know if part of it is editing, but I also think she's generally such an awkward person. The editors had a really hard time. She's talking about her like neuropathy. It's just so she's such an awkward, silly person. And that whole thing of like, I don't like spicy food, but you know, I do like Indian food. Can't tell you something as a South Asian, I I cringe so hard when the only thing that a white person wants to talk to me about is spicy food from my region. Like I remember one of my really good friends dated one of my Indian guy friends. I was I was really good friends. And she just kept being like, I love dal. I love spicy food. I can handle it. And it's like, that's not a prerequisite to dating a brown person. It's okay. We can have different tastes. It's fine. Like it's just such a weird thing that it always has to come up. Like you always have to talk about like yoga and like Bollywood and spicy food. And it's like, we're human beings beyond that. And it's just something is about it was so annoying to me. Anyway, at the end of this episode, Erica meets with Garcelle and <laughs> Erica wants a hot tea, but the restaurant is like, we can't get you a hot tea. Okay. I call bullshit on that. I feel like the production was like, whatever you do, make sure she gets an alcoholic beverage. I feel like the production in Beverly Hills, the producers are so messy that I could totally see them trying to pull the shit. But anyway, she owns up to the drinking stuff here and then somehow says that Sutton is the master of her own disaster, which she is, and that she is a liability. And it's like when Erica has to say any legal words that she learned from Tom, she like turns to this like other Mrs. Girardi voice. It's so weird. But I don't know what it means because... But but what I feel like is happening, and I saw this in Atlanta, and I see it now in Beverly Hills, is Marlo in Atlanta went in and did all her scenes under the assumption that producers and editors were going to make Kenya the villain as they usually do. And Erica and even Kyle, like earlier in the episode, Kyle tried to still stir shit up between Diana and, and Sutton. Like she kind of still tried to talk about it, and nobody took the bait. But like – even Erica in this scene of being like telling Garcelle, like, I'm so glad you have a new friend of to hang out with because Sutton is bringing you down. Something about that conversation feels like to me the same thing that Marlo was expecting is what Erica and the Fox 4 flop are expecting, which is that Sutton had a good season last season and now they're going to give her a villain edit. And it's like, girls, 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 you are on an, a, a show with an actual person who owes orphans and widows millions and millions of dollars, but gets glam. You are on a show with that person. There's no way the editors are going to try to make Sutton the bad guy here. And they they did. Sutton does awkward, dumb shit. But 
Sutton's not going to be the bad guy. I feel like they expected editing to make Sutton the bad guy this season. And so they keep doing this shit. And everybody's like, what show are you watching? What show are you making? Because it's not the show that's on TV right now. So to that, I will say, you know what, Beverly Hills producers? Good for you. I don't love that you're trying to get Erica drunk by not letting that lady give her chamomile tea outside on a rooftop in the winter, which makes no sense. But... I appreciate what you're doing here because you think that they think that they're in control about the story and where it's going, but they're idiots. They look really stupid. Um, Speaking of stupid, let's go to Real Houses of Dubai. Okay, stupid Caroline Stanbury had her stupid ass wedding. I love weddings, guys. I love weddings so much. I love watching weddings. Remember that show Four Weddings? Four Weddings was one of my favorite all-time reality TV shows. It was on TLC. It was so entertaining. I love weddings, but I do not care about Caroline Stanberry's wedding. Mandy Slutsker said on her podcast, and this is so true, I think Caroline really expected that this show was going to be Caroline Stanberry Gets Married show, and everybody else was just going to be around, but I don't think she realized that everyone was going to hit it out of the park the way they did, you know? But they had this wedding, and I'm just like, whatever. But we opened up on this fight between Caroline Brooks and Sarah Almondani. Now, I talked a good amount about Sarah Almondani. I don't have any new tea to share about her, but I still stand by it. This woman does not take any accountability at all all. And I loved Caroline Brooks talking in the confessionals. And she was like, you know, Sarah, she'll be like, oh, honey, babes, ya haram. Like what? Okay. Cracked me up. Cause I was like, Caroline Brooks is good. I know that she's thirsty and she's a bit of a tryhard and she's really unraveling in what she's trying to produce, but she's absolutely right about Sarah Almadani. She has, she tries to psychoanalyze people without any credentials. Like even at the end of this fight, Sarah's like something triggered you What triggers you, Sarah? Because you haven't taken any accountability for anything. What triggers you? Because I feel like I've all I've seen is just the same information about Sarah. I've gotten no new information about her. And like I said, there's nothing. There's so much shit out there about her that we have not even talked about on the show. That I'm hoping that she comes back for a second season because we got to dive into what a phony she is. Um, And the issue with Sarah is like, she never says at any point, I didn't mean it like that. I'm sorry. Like, I wasn't trying to hurt you. I think you're a great mom. Like, she doesn't say any of those things. Instead, she's just defensive. And she's just angry. Now, granted, Brooks is schmammered. But it's just, it's weird. I don't know. Brooks leaves because she's too drunk. And um, Stanbury does this thing that is like season two Jill Zarin, where she's talking shit about on mic, like, uh, about who she talking? She's talking about Ion. You remember season two of her Houses of New York? I think it was where Jill Zarin is like talking shit in the Hamptons about, um, Alex. And she's like, look at her, look at her. She's so third. She's like, she's so, she's so desperate or something at a party. I don't know what it was, but she keeps saying that Ayan dressed like Caroline. And I find that so problematic. Like there is something so messed up about this white woman trying to tell this black woman that you dressed up to look like me. And I I don't know how many other ways Ayan can say it. Like you're white and I'm a black person. I'm not dressed like you, Caroline. And like Juliet butts in, who she's terrible. God, I hate Juliet. She butts in like the douche canoe she is. Juliet is the original Teddy, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. And, like, it's annoying because, Caroline, you told everybody to wear white. And it's so irritating because she's, like, she says something in the confessional. It's, like, I expect her to have – I expect – talking to Ayan is, like, talking to a toddler. I expect her to have the tools to know what's right or wrong, but she doesn't. Which felt to me like a microaggression. It just – it felt so loaded and uncomfortable the way she talks about Ayan, the way she looks down on Ayan. And I get it. Ayan is an over-the-top – cringy person at times but something about the way Caroline Stanberry continuously looks down on her is really fucking frustrating and for her to be like oh she's trying to overshine me and all that it's not Ayan's fault that you're basic honey and your extensions are always showing I brought that up on every episode where I've talked about Dubai I know that um 
Sergio on the wedding day is like more annoying than ever. He's dumb. I can't stand him. It's a nice wedding. Again, I don't care. I feel like Sergio's only crying because all he sees is dollar signs. The wedding very much reminded me of Romaine and Mary from Selling Sunset. Like both Romaine and Sergio are just stupid as shit. Again, I don't care about this wedding, whatever. I will say this. It must be very easy to be happily married if you never, ever have to work for the rest of your life. <laughs> like, I think that they're both getting the best of what they want. And maybe here's – I think what's complicated is like at our age, right? Like at my age, when I got married at 24 or 25, like my – what I wanted out of a marriage was very different. And maybe that's also true for Caroline Stanberry when she got married to Jem. What you want out of a marriage is very different in your 20s and in your 30s. But I feel like when on your second chapter of life, what you want out of a marriage is very different. And maybe that's just things that I don't understand because I don't live that lifestyle. Maybe that's what works for them. And maybe that defines their definition of – that fulfills their definition of romance or love or whatever. But I don't care about them is the issue. I just – I don't care. Um they have this Dubai 50 Year of Independence Fashion Week event where Brooks, Lisa, and Ayan are, and Brooks admits to the girls that she was drunk and she needs to apologize to Nina, and she has no interest in apologizing to Sarah, which I'm like, good for you. I love watching these three girls together, and it's a shame because they filmed the reunion this week, and I think Brooks is back on Stanberry's team. I think the teams are Lisa and Ayan on one side, and then Brooks, uh, the Carolines, Nina, and uh, Sarah together. Nina is so boring, okay? Nina is trying to be the Heather Dubrow of the show, and she's so boring. She's so boring. I don't want to watch you build your townhouse and fuss at your husband. It's not cute or entertaining. Like, I just, I don't care about her, and she's just so dull. She brings nothing to the table. She's so thirsty. Something about her seat reads very thirsty and weird to me. Um, they have this Ladies of London cast come together uh, with Sergio to go to brunch with the Real Hustles of Dubai essentially the next day. And again, Juliet is doing the most, but the most important person ever comes to this brunch, who is Luke. <laughs> Luke was the gold star of Ladies of London. I loved him so much. Actually, the gold star of Ladies of London was the other Caroline, Caroline Fleming. And if you don't know her, you must know her because she's the best. She's the superior Caroline. Um but Ayana is immediately annoyed, annoyed by Juliet. And I feel like no matter what, all these people were just told, like, listen, if you want to be on camera, you need to tell Chanel Ayan that she dressed like a bride. And I feel like they all were like, okay, we will go and tell her on camera that she dressed like a bride. Because was, she was wearing a bodysuit, okay? It wasn't like that. Anyway, um, they talk about this childbirth thing. Oh, my God. Sergio is a literal moron. He does not understand how reproductive systems work. He doesn't understand basic anatomy. He thinks you can half cook a baby and transfer it to a different oven. He doesn't understand what preclemsia is. He doesn't understand any of this stuff, and it is so alarming. And I'm really glad Sophie was there to be like, um, this is not a good idea. <laughs> Are you sure that's a good idea, darling? She, I love Sophie Stanberry. She's so good. And she's just, God, she's so stunning. That hair, I would cut my arm off to have Sophie Stanberry's hair. Um, but this guy doesn't understand anything about basic childbirth and it is not endearing or nice. It's scary. Um, also not great that Dubai does not allow surrogacy. Um, because you can't have birth. You can't have babies without being married. <laughs> you know, the laws in Dubai are wild. I'm not going to lie. It is a problematic place. Okay. But to be honest, I feel like Texas is about to pass those kinds of laws. So, so. Um, then we have a scene with Brooks at home with her mom, this Afro-Latina um, woman, woman from Honduras. And she tells her mom about the situation with Sarah. And we get to know a lot more about Brooks's previous marriage, which I feel like we're getting the idea that it was abusive, it was manipulative, it was unhealthy, it was toxic. And I want to know more about that because I think that adds to why she feels so defensive about Sarah talking about like, you need to do this for your kids and that for your kids. It is weird that Caroline doesn't have any pictures of her son downstairs. 
it is weird that she's doing that stuff now. I feel like Caroline bought that house to film. I feel like Caroline is rushing to hustle to be on the show. Um, and I hope she finds her footing because I do think that she has an interesting story to tell. It is interesting that this black woman from Boston, this Afro-Latina black woman from Boston, gets married to the super rich guy, lives in Dubai, has these beautiful homes, is in real estate, is building a spa. I think that is very interesting. Um, but I just would like to know, I would like to figure all that out without her trying to be such a tryhard on the show. And like, it just, something about it feels really clunky and how she's presenting herself. And I hope we get to know more about her. Um, and I don't know if some of the things that she can share about her previous marriage, she's like restricted because possibly the guy is in power. I don't know. But I think that adds to why she doesn't want somebody like Sarah Almadani giving her advice about how to be a parent or what she should do and go tuck in your son and you should be nicer and you should cut the toxic generational trauma. Like if there's no trauma for Brooks, then you can't tell her to cut the cycle. There's whatever. You guys know I talked about it last week. I'm not going to repeat myself. But that's it. Was this rushed? There's just – you guys, I'm sorry if it was rushed, okay? I did the best I could. Um, but that's it for this episode. I'm excited for the reunion. Um, that's going to happen for Dubai. It seemed to be interesting enough, I guess. Um, Real Houses of Beverly Hills next week. What we lo- Okay, so let's talk about the lineup. I, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to do it. The lineup right now is, of course, Atlanta and married to medicine on Sundays. And then we just have these ladies on Wednesday. So we're going to keep it light for the next few weeks. And then I think we need Potomac to come back. Last year, Potomac was on TV in August and I don't understand where we are here. TikTok. Okay. Where is the trailer for Potomac? When are we getting the show? Come on. Bravo. Um, okay. Anyway, that's it. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you and talk to you next time. Bye. The reality is, is now on Patreon, and here are some of our fabulous supporters. Chastity Davis. Don't be fooled by my name. The only thing I abstain from is your bullshit. Jessica Riley. Where I come from, money can buy you anything, but I'll take the garbage plate. Seiran Hayati. In Sweden, we have ABBA, IKEA, and if you mess with me, some other four-letter words. Kelly Payfer. I may be from down under, but don't ever underestimate me. Richie D. If you can't be cool, you can't be with Caduce. Megan Shaw. I may be a mom but I'll never be your model minority. Becca Simon. It gets icy where I'm from, so you know I'll bring the heat. Jill Hirsch. Your petty drama can't take this warrior down. Jamie Allrunner. Where I come from, we're known for our great lakes, but I'm just known for my great ass. Sarah Gibbs. You may not like the cut of my jib, but that's what you get from Sarah Gibbs. Maria M. Where I'm from, they sing God Save the Queen, so I guess you can call me a god. Jill Walsh. I made it up this hill myself, and I'll kick any jack off. Jesse Willis. I may not run in traffic, but I'll give you a run for your money. Eleanor Manning. I run with a fabulous circle of people, and you're not even on my payroll. John Friedman. Diamonds aren't a girl's best friend. John Friedman is. Sarah Watkins Bilstein. Playtime is over. This mama means business. Laura Zielinski. Whether it's breast pumping or fist pumping, this Jersey girl brings the party. Amanda Agosti. Everything is bigger in Texas, and my heart is no exception. Tracy Masters. When you're the master of your own destiny, no one can ever take you down. Marl Farsi. Reading is fundamental, and in Farsi, the reads are monumental. Tracy Newman. My presence is a gift, so remember the thank you note. Lola Del Rio. Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets, and I get it all. Ade Adidoko. It may look like I'm stirring the pot, but I'm actually just smoking. Deepa Kanapoli. Some people say I have secrets, but at least they're not federal indictments. Jada. People are intimidated by my great success and my great ass. Naveen Jonathan. I'll give you the shirt off my back, and also my unsolicited opinion. Hadil Ibrahim. Some things are too hot to handle, like me and the tea I spill. Trinity Supermanium. I have four degrees and eight syllables and zero fucks to give. Beth Bayer. The secret to my success is staying out of your BS. Shannon Anthony. There's no fun in moderation, but there's plenty of shame. Rita Ryan. Don't be fooled by my Midwest charm, because I'm nobody's fool. Brianna Tony. Some people strive for perfection, but I'm already there.
there. And lastly, Tanisha. While others are turning tables, I'm dancing on them. <laughs>